I now reconvene the school, uh, the Marion County School Board at 6 p.m. By the courtesy of those listening to the meeting, I'm requesting everyone in the audience please turn off your cell phone or put them on vibrate. Mr. Kevin Christian, Public Relations Officer and TV Media Production Coordinator, please introduce the students who will be providing the inspiration and leading us in the pledge this evening. I am thrilled to share these two students with you. They don't even have to say a single word to be our inspiration for this evening. That's because in 13 years of school, and that's kindergarten through 12th grade, they did not miss a single day of school. I don't even know how that's possible other than they went to school when they didn't feel well or mom and dad put them out the door and made them go or they just wanted to go. My guess is it's the latter. So I'm just in awe of these two students and I know that they have tremendously successful futures ahead of them. There's certainly not an employer in this county that wouldn't want somebody who shows up for work every day. And uh, I would like to introduce to you Kanaya Nemore and Emily Wolf. And I'm going to ask them to come forward. They can stand here beside me so the camera can see them. They're a little nervous about the cameras. Just to share some information with you, remember that's 100% attendance, 2,340 days out of 2,340 days of school. Kanaya graduates, this is Kanaya. She graduated from Vanguard High School earlier this month and in 2001 she enrolled in our school district as a kindergartner at Dr. N.H. Jones Elementary. She also attended Osceola Middle and Howard Middle Schools and she's 18 years old and this fall she will study biology at the University of Florida. All right, go Gators. Good choice. <laughs> she is the daughter of Ken and Peggy Nemore of Ocala, and I think Peggy, mom, is in the audience tonight. Emily, who is standing beside me, graduated from Westport High School earlier this month. In 2001, she enrolled in our district as a kindergarten student at Madison Street Academy. She's 18 years old and she also attended Westport Middle back when Westport Middle existed and then transferred over to Liberty Middle and this fall she will study accounting at the University of North Florida. She's the daughter of Jerry and Angela Wolf of Ocala as well. So before they lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, I want to steal just a little bit of their spotlight and recognize two other students in their four years of high school. They never missed a single day. And for high schoolers, that's pretty tremendous as well. And they were eligible, of course, to win that free car that was given away. Those two seniors were, or are, excuse me, Joshua Beckwith from Bellevue High School and Jody Weber of Denellum High School. So I know you guys will have comments to share with these lovely ladies, but I'm going to ask them to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Board, I, I know we have some people that would like to just say a few words. Both of you, I am so proud of you, you know, from kindergarten, not missing a day, that's exceptional, you know? And I, I kinda wanna say I hope you take that into the workforce too, the, and at college, because if, if you miss a class, you miss so much, you know? But I'm extremely proud. I, I was at both your graduations and was looking for you, you know? And I, and I remember you, um, Kanaya, I remember you so much. And I know I saw you, Emily, on the side, but I just wanted, I wanted to say then, thank you for setting such a positive example that says school is a good place to be at. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Ely? I'm also very, very proud of both of you for, um, I hope you stayed healthy, assume you did, didn't come to school and spread all those germs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm, I'm also very pleased that you're staying t at, in Florida for universities that you chose in the state of Florida. And hopefully you'll come back and be a part of Marion County. And um, we hope to see you as future leaders of our county and congratulations good luck to you thank you and i'm very proud of you also my children uh, two of my three children went to school at madison street it's interesting one went to nh jones and one went to madison street that says a lot for the magnet school the magnet programs to keep you really really engaged mm -hmm. at school um unfortunately you know my children 
where they're ahead of you. Thank goodness you did not follow their footsteps. <laughs> they're all okay now. They're all college graduates and all have their own homes, but trust me, we uh, did not have great attendance sometimes with the boys, with the boys. I was telling Mr. Crawford, I see we don't have any boys up here. <laughs> we so, have in the past. Okay. <laughs> okay, I won't be a feminist then. Sexist, yeah. <laughs> but congratulations, so proud of you. Thank you. I'm just trying to find the right words because I'm sitting here still in awe, uh, you know, having grown up too and, and all of the things that you run across uh, in your lifetime that will cause you maybe not to want to go to school that day, whether it's sickness or whatever it is. So um, I am just ultimately impressed. I wish you the, uh, the best. You, you have made us proud. Ladies, I just want to say on behalf of all your colleagues, congratulations to you. And the thing I will say to you, make sure you remember the Milling Foundation. <laughs> the Milling Foundation, did you take advantage of it? If you don't, talk with your counselor. <clears throat> because the Milling Foundation is something there for any of our students that graduate from all our schools that go to the University of Florida. <clears throat> take advantage of it. And for everybody here, it, this is our this is one of our products right here, and this is what we're most proud of, is the fact that we have kids that came to school, they worked hard, they behaved, and good things happened. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Chairman, with the exception of items C21, C23, and C26, which have been withdrawn entirely, I recommend approval of the agenda for the June 24th, 2014 school board meeting with the materials in the board packet, those materials distributed to board members at the meeting, the audio recording and DVD included as part of the official record of the meeting. May I have a motion on the superintendent's recommendation? A motion and a second. So moved. Second. It was motioned by Ms. Ely, second by Mrs. Warrington. <laughs> All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passed 5 0. May I have a motion to approve the minutes for the May 22, 2014 administrative briefing and work session? The May 27, 2014 school board meeting. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. It was a motion by Ms. Ely, second by Ms. Barnton. Are there any corrections or additions uh, in the minutes? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The motion passed 5 0. May I have a motion to adopt the resolution number 14 04 declaring 0 0.69 acres? Abdullah parcel unnecessary for educational purposes. So second. It was moved by Mr. Crawford and second by Mrs. Boynton. in the discussion? Move the question. Move the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed 5 0. May I have a motion to uh, adopt the revised board policy 6.92 health insurance premium? May I have a motion and a second? Someone. Second. It was moved by Ms. Boynton, second by Mrs. Ely. Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Chairman, this board policy has been revised to clarify the process and procedures, update statutory authority, and laws implemented. I declare a, a public hearing. Is there anyone present who wishes to address the re revised board policy? Saying none, board. Call the question. 
All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed five zero. May I have a motion to adopt a new job classification description for assistant records manager? May I have a motion and a second? So moved. So moved second. by Ms. Crawford and second by Mr. Ely, Ms. Ely. Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Chairman, this new job classification description will allow the Employment Services Division to hire an assistant records manager to assist the records manager. Due to state reporting and Skyward data input and data mining becoming more complex, it is necessary to have a second person in this area. I declare a public hearing. Is there anyone present who wishes to address the new job class uh, classification description? Seeing none, board. Call the question. All in favor signify by saying aye. Motion passed five zero. May I have a motion to adopt a new job classification description for the maintenance part technician? May I have a motion and a second? So moved. So moved by Ms. Boynton. Second. second by Ms. Ely. Mr. Superintendent. Mr. Chairman, this new job classification description is recommended to comply with the 2014-15 staffing plan. I declare a public hearing. Is there anyone here to, who wishes to address the new job classification description for maintenance, maintenance parts technician? Seeing none. Board. It's boring to call the question. Okay, I call the question. Motion second. Did I get a second? Second. Okay. You already have that. Yeah, motion. Good. Motion second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed uh, 5 0. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, with the exception of items C21, C23, and C26, which has been withdrawn entirely from the agenda, and item uh, C20, C22, and C25, which have been placed on the regular agenda for discussion? May I, have, may I have a motion? So moved. Second. And a second by Mr. Crawford, Ms. Warrington, and Mr. Crawford. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passed 5 0. May I have a motion? To to modify for a review of the Master Works uh, Service contract with Citrus Levy Marin Regional Workforce uh, Development Board Incorporated, a uh, career service, Citrus Levy and Marin. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. It was moved by Mr. Crawford and second by Ms. Warrington. Mr. Crawford, you withdrew this item for Aye. discussion. Yes, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. And, and board, <clears throat> I withdrew this item, and then there's one other item I, I withdrew. Uh, and, and strictly, it's a procedural um, a matter. I want to make sure that it is noted in the minutes um, that, if you remember, the, the recap sheet in, in the front of the actual uh, item mentioned that there is no cost to the school district. And I just want to make sure that gets uh, put in the minutes because I have seen How's the best way to describe it? Um, mission creep. Uh, in, in the past, where suddenly there is a, a cost factor that comes back to the board, and it wasn't something that we had initially agreed to when we agreed to this matter. So that's all I'm, I'm asking for. I have no. I think the program is a marvelous uh, program, and 
Okay, thank you. Board, any other discussion? A call for the vote. Okay. Uh, we just make a note in the minutes. I, I'm just, I, the fact that, that it is noted in the minutes that we. Uh, okay. No cost. Yes. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed five zero. May I have a motion to approve the re uh, relocation and setup of a Marion County, of a Marion County public school on portable, on the Westport High School campus, funding through a donation by the Westport High uh, School Band Boosters uh, Club. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Ely, second by Ms. Uh, Boynton. Mr. Crawford, you withdrew this item. Oh, okay. This yeah, this was the uh, the other one. There was another one I was thinking of, but I had put it back on the uh, the agenda. And again, it's the same same rationale. Uh, uh, the band boosters very generously have uh, uh, donated the money. The my understanding is the portable has already been uh, been moved, and I just want to make sure that 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 was included in the minutes. Okay. Any additional discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the motion passed five zero. May I have a motion to approve the 2014-2016 technology plan? May I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. It was a move by Mr. Crawford, second by Ms. Borrington. <coughs> Ms. Stacy, you withdrew this item. Yes. Um, and I'm looking to see if this is the contract that had the, um, let me make sure we got the right one pulled. Talking about the bandwidth? No, this isn't the one. This isn't it. No, but that's okay. Oh, um, this is not the right one. It was the, um, it was the one on the technical contract, but that's okay. No. This is what you told me that you were pulling. No. Technology it, thing. Page three. Well, maybe I'm not pulling it up right then. Maybe it looks different on my computer. <laughs> anyway, the one that I was pulling was the one that talked to on page, on page three and page 31 and page 33 and page 21. Um, on the plan, it was talking about and it. Um, the Sunshine State standards and the Next Generation standards. I don't know that this is the right one of the ten. I think there was two of Mr. Hansen's. Thirty-one, you said. Were there two, Mr. Hansen, or am I just not reading this paper right Come now? Come on, Mr. Hansen. Okay. Because it might yeah, I not. Believe this is, I believe this is the correct document. Um, okay, I see it. I'm seeing it now. It's just looking on this computer is different than looking on my iPad. I guess y'all know yeah, how. Page I am. three and one point one. Yeah, this is it. Just looks different, big. Um, one thing that I think we need to do is be real, real careful when we, when we put these contracts out, we need to read them. This talks about promoting the effective use of technology to implement, to implement the next generation Sunshine Standards Common Core and to improve performance of all students. It's not next generation standards anymore. It, it's Sunshine Standards and it's not um, Sunshine State Standards, it's the Florida Standards. And it's not Common Core, it's Florida Standards. If you go all the way down to the signature page, um, it even talks about it at the very bottom. Let me get down there. Where the final signature is, where Mr. Tom signs and where Mr. James signs, it even says 
um, for the implementation of Common Core. So we need to make sure that we correct that and this contract, sh this paperwork should have Florida standards, not Sunshine State standards, not next generation standards, but Florida standards and not Common Core. Um, just need to have the document correct. Well, if you're going to affect the document, you, you, you need to offer an amendment to strike okay. those terms and, and replace with Florida's Florida Okay, standards. so can I do that? Can I offer an amendment mm -hmm. to correct the document? Right. And, um, and correct the document so that in, on, it's on page 3, page 31, page 33, and page 21. There's reference to different standards that are not at all what we have now. 3, 31, 33. And I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, page 3, page 21, page 31, and page 33. Page 33 is a signing document, the very last page, where it says, um, where we get the signatures. Anyway, I would just like to strike those and correct the, the phrase to be the Florida standards because that's the correct terminology. We'll, we'll scan the entire document. Yeah, we'll make that change. The entire document. There may be other uh, references in there. We'll make sure it does say, say uh, Florida standards. Okay. And I'll, we need. I'll, I'll second it. We just need to be careful when I'm we're putting this stuff together and have someone read okay. through it. Okay. It was motion that that we have that Miss uh, Stacy's uh, corrections be made it made and the superintendent. Has agreed to do that as a second by Mr. Crawford. In reference to the uh, <coughs> the amendment, all in favor of the amendment being uh, being amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank Okay, the amendment passed 5 0. Yes, Got one more vote. Mrs. 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 Okay, the motion passed 5 0. May I have a motion to approve the original uh, amendment with the addition of the amendment? Okay. Approve the 2014-16 technology plan as amended. As amended. Okay. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 The motion. Oh wait a minute. Okay. The motion passed five zero. May I have a motion to approve the following donation? $1,000 to Forest High School <coughs> from the Market of Marion. $1,000 to Forest High School from um, Bart Blessing Management, LLC. May I have a motion and a second? So moved. So moved by Mr. Crawford. Second. Second by Mr. Ely. All in favor signify by saying aye. Uh -huh. Aye. The motion passed 5 0. Before we go any further, I would like to have Mr. Crawford, if you would do the thank oh, you. Thank you. And, and it's, it's always a pleasure uh, to thank the people who have um, so generously supported uh, public education in this county. We, we have two fine examples tonight. So, on behalf of the board, I say thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Meeting and reminders, there's a special work session scheduled for Wednesday, June 25th, uh, 5th at 2014 at 10 p.m. The purpose of the work session is to hold a conference call with Attorney O'Brien to, to continue discussion, discussing on the hiring process of an in-house attorney. The next administrative briefing and work session is scheduled for Thursday, July 17, 2014 at 9 a.m. The purpose of the work session is to receive the school planning update, including impact fee study and student projection, uh, projection draft of the five-year plan, uh, plan, both proposal for joint use of recreation facilities with the Marion County, Marion County, and revision to the board policy 5.20 student assignment as related to open enrollment. Please. Um, 
make notes so we will be aware of the meetings. A.M. A.M. Sorry, A.M. Good job. Okay, we're not meeting at 10 p.m. A.M. <laughs> but that's a good thing. Okay, I will now ask board members for their comments. And I'll start with Mr. Crawford. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> board, uh, I've got uh, three items uh, uh, tonight, and, and uh, two of them are are really uh, directed towards the uh, the superintendent and just in the, in the course of, of expressing a, a, uh, a concern I know that there is uh, a desire to change how we're handling part of the ESE uh, program uh, renaming uh, some of the people uh, that are in that program and also reducing uh, the number and I'm, I'm concerned that we're that we may be saving money not I'm not concerned we'd be saving money but I'm concerned that in the course of, of saving money are we really going to uh, maintain the same efficiency uh, that we that we currently have or how is this program going to enhance uh, what we're doing in the oversight of, uh, of those programs out there so uh, it's just a concern I'm all in favor of saving money but I, I don't want us to um, you know, fall over a mountain trying to avoid a molehill, and that's what uh, I worry about uh, uh, sometimes. The other item is, um, and, I, and I know this is not, that's not something that has uh, come out of your office, Mr. Superintendent, this is actually it's something that's come out of DOD. Um, the Department of Defense is cutting back on how they want to fund the ROTC program. Um, I know two of the branches have uh, said they're only gonna pay for X number of months. Uh, the third branch of the school uh, programs we have in this county have, have agreed to continue the, I guess, 11 months that we're currently uh, uh, operating under. Am I correct on, on that? The only worry that I have in, in, in making uh, the cutback is let's not forget that uh, DOD has made a run at us uh, uh, two years in a row asking us to willingly give back some of those ROTC uh, programs and I would just want to make sure that we do not give them an opportunity to use this as saying okay you won't fund it for the 10 months we want to pay for 11 but you only want to do so therefore we're pulling uh, those programs so I'm just saying as we're as we're looking at this um, let's make sure that um, again we're not we're not foolish in, in, in our actions and give give them a chance to get into it because we're one of the few counties in the state that have a, uh, a, a ROTC program at every one of our, our high schools and one of my former colleagues on, on this board uh, uh, Jim Kelly worked very hard and tirelessly to get, make sure uh, that happened and it wasn't it wasn't easy and that was even when um, defense was giving away uh, these programs a lot more freely now you, you the chances of getting one are, are almost nil so I'd hate to lose the uniqueness that we have here in, in Marion County and especially when you look at uh, you know 1500 children are involved in uh, in those programs across our, our seven uh, high schools so it is just a, a, a wonderful uh, opportunity for them so I just you know uh, wanted to, to bring that up and, and board uh, tonight, I had originally had pulled this item off the, uh, the agenda, but I'm not, I'm not willing to get in the way in any way that possible in, in our move from uh, a outside council to an indoor council. The only thing I would advise if you, if you look at, and I realize this is a temporary position that we voted for tonight, which is to bridge the gap until we have somebody in place and they've been able to decide uh, the staff person that they uh, that they would like to have but I'm concerned about if you if you take what we're going to be paying them that it it equates out to a, a higher rate than I think that we actually need to and remember one of the benefits of of, of going to the in-house in, in outside of having this person available to us uh, you know 40 hours a week without having the meter running. Uh, but 
the fact that we were also going to save some, I, I believe there were some savings that we could uh, gain from this and then redirect into. Obviously, we, we know all the different places that have savings, no matter how small they may be, but they can go. So I just hope that when we, when we do have this discussion, and maybe tomorrow even, um, of how we're setting some of the, uh, the uh, cost levels that we, let's go in below what we may think these things are gonna cost us. Get, we're sticking our toe in the water. Let's, let's see how it, it, it works out for us. And then there always can be adjustments in, in the future for the, uh, the pay on this. And I'm a firm believer, you, you know, you get what you uh, uh, pay for, but I think we're gonna be, uh, I think we're gonna be very pleasantly surprised with the number of people that are going to up, up, apply for uh, this job. So that's my, that's my only concern. And like I said, when I saw the numbers, I just you know, did my quick calculation and it's, it's, um, it's actually more than what we would probably pay a, uh, a person that is slotted in the, in the current uh, uh, staffing um, hierarchy. So it's, uh, it's just one of my pet peeves. Mr. Crawford, didn't yeah. we come to consensus as to the salary range um, when we had our last work session here with Mr. O'Brien? Yeah, but I'm still concerned. I, I just um, aren't yeah. there advertisements out there now? And I know. Um, nope. We we had to wait until tomorrow's meeting, okay. and okay. then they would go out after that. Okay. So I would just everybody would sleep on it uh, tonight. And and you know if you don't agree with me, you know I, that's fine. I, I I I'm just trying to err on the side of caution and and, and you know. Okay, Miss Stacy. Yeah, I've gone through some of my surveys and said that I would share some of the information that I found and thought this was a good time to do it since we're going on a closing time for a couple of weeks. We're gonna be off and vacation and everything. And I wanna thank Marion County's employees for their great response. So many people have called me because they were afraid to put anything in writing. My phone has rung off its hook for at least the first four weeks because teachers will call me and talk to me on the phone. I, in fact, I have a meeting on Thursday with teachers in their home because they're afraid to meet with me even in a public place. And so many, many of my contacts have been verbal with people. But um, I also wanna thank Mr. Callahan. He put my address in, in, the, um, in the newspaper and actually I got a great contact that called me that I was able to forward some information onto the school system and to Councilman, uh, City Councilman Molliver that probably saved the taxpayers possibly hundreds of thousand dollars in legal fees down the road for something that I found out because someone got my name out of the paper thanks to you that was a complete outsider out in the city and this has gone on um, between the city council and the school board to possibly really end up at the end of the day saving us a lot of legal fees on both sides um, but what it has taught me about our education system I could not have learned any other way Tonight, I want to narrow down the largest concerns into five areas based upon the information I have gathered. Interestingly, it totally dovetails with what our district surveys stated as I shared with you last week. It's just a little more organized thoughts this week. They've been on a district shelf conveniently for quite a while collecting dust and I'm glad they're now off the shelf. My concerns are teacher intimidation, staff development issues, school discipline problems, lack of respect shown for teachers, FCAT reading issues and the need to return music, art, and PE because we are destroying creativity in our young minds. My first concern was teacher intimidation. In many instances, teachers got together and they actually wrote me group letters. I would have, I don't know how many teachers were involved, but they would send me a master letter of, of a bunch of teachers all together. In other in instances, great research packages were put together for me and they were sent my way. Then in other situations, teachers met with me in their homes and I'm continuing to meet with teachers in their homes. They were actually afraid to meet with me in public places. And that is, and the fear of backlash, I don't understand. And Mr. Tom and I know some of this is, is just not real. I know some of it is perception. And I know that you're gonna get a handle on some of this for us. But um, the things that I have found up have been clearly backed up, not only from my surveys, but also from the district's own survey, which shows that 36% of the elementary teachers are fearful to share professional opinions at their school. Mrs. Ely, obviously since you stated last week that you did not agree with my concerns over teachers feeling intimidated, proclaiming no one is giving you this info that I am receiving. 
simply shows me that maybe they still aren't ready to trust you and talk to you and they remember you as a principal because our own surveys in the district show exactly what I have said. It's not my writing, it's the district's own surveys. You can disagree with me till the cows come home, but the surveys say exactly what I have been saying for a year. We were told that they surveyed pa parents for the Title I, so teachers also were done at that same time. But we were not given a copy of those surveys last year. We had no clue. In fact, when I offered to survey um, the teachers, I just assumed that the surveys, when Mr. Thomas said we had done electronic surveys, that those surveys strictly spoke about curriculum <coughs> things and maybe not the type of items that um, I wanted to do. And so I stupidly just assumed that. And finally, just out of my own curiosity, I requested those surveys and, and found out they were really what I really, really wanted all along. Um, had I just known or had someone shared them with us, we could have been a whole year ahead on, of what we're doing now. My second largest issue has been that staff development, especially at the elementary level, was obviously not serving its costly intended purpose in every school. And my letters from teachers back that up as being the concern of many of the teachers. Well, bless Pete, and lo and behold, your survey shows that nearly one in four elementary teachers feel they do not get the support needed following the professional development activities. Besides that, the students' test scores also support my position. What this tells me is that things are working at some schools, but not at others. If one in four schools has a problem, then that equates to six elementary schools where something just isn't right. And if you want to make it easier to view the big picture, and you can look at it like that. My third concern is that discipline is ineffective in some schools while working in others. The only question on the county survey that I could connect in any way was the question asking if the question went like this. The school, if the school administration consistently and fairly enforces the code of student conduct and over all one in five teachers on our school survey says no not many middle school teachers responded but of those that did respond 66 percent of those said it was not consistently enforced it was a low number that re that replied back because 700 in some areas replied and like 70 in that area replied of the middle i mean 700 overall replied but there were 70 in this area but when you do a sampling and political polling, um, if it's guaranteed voters, then that sampling is, is a usually a, a, a very promising thing that that speaks for pretty much the whole of the voters because we'll do a national, a national survey at a pre, in a presidential polling and maybe only poll 700 people and try to get a, a look, a snapshot at what's happening. And so really, you know, 70 or 80 teachers um, that we know are teachers because they answered on the school board survey is a good sampling. 66% of those middle school teachers do not fair, believe that things are consistently and fairly enforced on our school, code, of school, code of conduct. Um, so, my fourth concern is that I have been saying since day one of my campaign trail, and I've never changed my mantra since being elected, it is that teachers have become scapegoats of a failed education system, or we will call it a culture and we need to return them to pillars of the community as they were when I was a child. Okay, on item number 19, on our own school survey, it clearly shows that nearly one in three elementary teachers do not feel valued at their school. And one in four of all the groupings do not feel valued at their school, but I think we can all fix this. All of the things above regarding student discipline and fearful of express, or that they are fearful of expressing their professional opinion totally supports this answer and supports my accusations since November 2012 when I hit this board seat. My fifth concern is reading FCAT scores declining, which recent FCAT scores back up. Also, teachers being asked to cheat and give students a 55% score whether they earn it or not is very concerning to me. Um, quite a few teachers shared that with me. I don't know why this school board is shocked about the recent FCAT scores because teachers were warning me about this all year long. You can't turn a teacher's classroom world upside down and expect to have no unintended consequences. 
I discussed that FCAT issue last week, but let us discuss a teacher's letter to me. I will not mention the school on television, but I will tell you the school, Mr. Tommen, privately. A teacher writes, Mrs. Stacy, I am so glad that finally someone is interested in what really goes on in our schools. I have wanted to write the star banner, but worried about job security. At my school, nothing really works, as you will soon see. And my note is that this, this letter was given to me in April, um, and test scores had, I mean, tests were just being, just starting, and so there was no information, she had no way of knowing what the outcome would be. And the, this school has declined academically dramatically. Just as she told me that the school was going to do poorly in FCAT, they declined dramatically. And this is the school, Mr. Langford, I spoke with you about today. And she also talked about the teachers being dropped, encouraged to drop that 55 to the drop a 55 percent into the grade book. She says I have refused to do this, but other teachers came in and do it all the time. I view it as unethical. This is cheating but yet the students are punished for cheating. I actually heard an AP at our school tell a teacher that it is unfair to the poor little kid who always fails. PBS is a great idea and it works at some schools, but when the principal refuses to support the team with their decision making, then it becomes a waste of time. So now for some topics straight from the teacher's letter. Um, let's see. And anyway, there's some other things that goes on and on and on. Um, but I'd like to address something that one of them kind of. No, I'm not going to read. It. I've got a little highlight thing. Uh, no, I've got like four minutes. First of all, this teacher says I'd like to thank you for giving us the overworked, underpaid, and certainly underappreciated teachers of Marion County the opportunity to tell someone this. I am sure that you understand that by year you're doing this, you will be branded as a troublemaker and not a team player. The powers that be will be out to get you, Mrs. Stacy, and they will use every dirty trick in the book to discredit and besearch your name. I have found that unless you agree with the administration and put on a happy face and pretend that the emperor really does have new clothes, then you are labeled as being negative, not a team player, or the ultimate, you don't really care about the needs of the students. Reality and true problem solving is not in the playbook. She's been teaching 20 years and she, you know, she shared that concern. But then I have an interesting thing from one teacher. She says, as long as complaining teachers can come up with suggestions for solutions to issues, there is no problem speaking up. Complaining just because you are unhappy or you don't like your job is just not productive for anyone. So I appreciate that teacher's comments. Being part of the solution is always better than being part of the problem. However, I have worked for a few principals in the past that would try to get you back for disagreeing with them but the new crop of principals I have worked with lately don't seem to be so much that way. And the union has given teachers a voice and a path to settle grievances with much more respect now. One thing that I would like to read that Mrs. that y'all might like. Um, also, we have, of course, they're talking about the stop sending students to the next grade level. This is over and over if they haven't mastered the current standards. Um, this teacher says, when I ask what could I do to, to balance mor morale, she says, if you just continue to keep in touch and on top of what directly affects us in the classroom, then over half the battle has been fought. So much of the disparity of jobs and duties, favoritism and entitlement happens and that's so much. So, um, but I'd like to end with a comment that a teacher put at the bottom of hers, a concerned teacher, and, and she, I'm not even reading what she said, but she wrote, it is hard to imagine a more stupid or more dangerous way of making decisions than by putting those decisions in the hands of people who pay no price for being wrong. When our school board is wrong about decisions we make, the teachers become the scapegoats. But I'd like to close with something really positive, a great letter from a teacher. This was dated 4-15-14. Dear Mrs. Stacy, first, thank you for asking us for some input. I really don't have any complaints. I feel honored to work as an elementary teacher in this great school district. I have been blessed. This one makes me sad. I mean, not sad, it makes me happy cry. It makes happy tears. I have been blessed with a wonderful principal at my school. She is very supportive. 
and never has threatened a bad, a bad evaluation for making discipline referrals. I feel very supported by my administrators at my school. Certainly if a student is dis disrespectful to me, I know I have the support of my dean and my administrative team. Cell phones, fortunately, are not an issue at elementary schools yet, thank goodness, so I have no input for you on that topic. My experience with PBS has also been positive. It has not, it's not anything new to me because having school-wide expectations clearly defined for all students is a solid practice we have employed at our school for many years, and overall I support it. On the topic of our school psychologist, behavior psychologist, and social worker, I do not know what we would do without them. They are fantastic support at our school. Teachers just can't do it all, and these folks make things happen for students in need. With regard to Common Core, I have received some training on this, but I feel I need much more. We are teaching Common Core now, and I am doing the best I can, but I believe it would benefit for a little more training on this important topic. Again, thank you for the opportunity to share with you directly and anonymously, sincerely, a happy elementary teacher. So thank you. Um, I appreciate you closing with uh, that letter from the teacher. I know that you've got a lot of letters that you've received. Um, what, what I heard, and we've got a lot of issues in the school system. We always will, Miss Stacy, and we're always working to find solutions to the issues that we have. Um, we can't fix it with you know you re reading these letters to all of us. We, we can't fix it that way, but we need to be aware of what's going on in our schools and what issues we need to address and can address and can can work on to improve. Um, I did want to um, share with you what four of us went to today. This was the um, the annual meeting for the Public School Foundation. I want to um, share a successful morning. Mr. Tommen went with us also. This is the Public School Foundation. I am so proud that we have this in Marion County. They had their annual meeting and they uh, shared what they're doing with all of their programs. Take stock in children. Uh, we had a, a senior high girl who um, got up and spoke and she's um, she, w she had a mentor from eighth grade on and she's um, graduated. She got a scholarship for John Hopkins University. I was so proud of her and she was so eloquent when she spoke. Uh, Tools for Teaching is a, a place in um, Marion County where teachers who need pencils, paper, any kind of tools can go there and it's totally free. Uh, coats for Kids, that's something else that they focus on. Um, so parents, if you have coats that your children are growing, please hold on to them so you can make a donation. For um, We don't need them now, for sure, with the temperatures in the 90s, but we will in the fall. And Coupons for Education, uh, they, uh, that's run by the foundation. All of that money gets put back in schools. As also the Grants for Great Ideas, um, I was part of that when I was a teacher, and I think it's great to be able to give some of that foundation money back to our teachers who have really good ideas that they're implementing in the classroom and need a little bit more money. And last is our Golden Apple Teacher of the Year, and our Golden Apple teacher spoke this morning. He was great. He's, um, he was the one who implemented Tools for Teaching. So um, thank you, Public School Foundation, and Judy Zanetti and Lauren DiOrio for putting on an excellent program and a great report to, um, to the county as to what, what you all are doing to help our kids. Thank you. Ms. Morton. Thank you. I, too, uh, attended the uh, public education Foundations meeting and it, it was very rewarding and um, I want to thank Judy Donetti and uh, Lauren Diario for the fine work that they do. But I have a couple things I'd like to talk to you about. First I want to say to you Miss Stacy, you brought a lot of information to us and the only way that we can even remember all that you talked about if you put it in a report, bring it to us because awareness is important and thank you. Now I wanted to um, bring to you, I don't know if you attended, this is for the board member, just to give you a copy, the information I've been giving to, to you about the Lexile reading scores. I know many of us are aware of it mm -hmm. already, but we went to a, a conference and they brought it here to Marion County and it was over in the superintendent and administration. They graciously held this over at MTI. And I want to read a couple pages <laughs> of it, the Lexile reading, and it says that the average high school student Lexile reading is at 900. But in order to be even in agriculture, you have to have a Lexile reading at 1510. So part of Common Core was to implement changes 
to make that Lexile reading score, reading level go up. And I, I, and I wanted to share with you, I'm going to give each board member a packet. Pass that down. Thank you. The information. I'm sure most of us did attend it, but I just wanted to bring it back to your attention. And some of this has already been phased in to some of the testing, so it, it makes a difference. And to you. Could you pass this down to Ms. Brock? Okay, and then the last thing I, we all attended the um, FSBA uh, conference, and uh, annual conference in Tampa. And it was such a well-attended event, but it was also very in informational. Um, I got a lot out of it, and when I came back, I rushed to talk to, to uh, Mr. Langford and uh, talk to Mr. Fionnello about some of the things that we learned. And Mr. Superintendent, I'd like to present it to you to see if you could get more information, please, for, on the Positive Pathways program that Orange County has initiated in their school system, which offers an, an alternative um, alternative schools and expulsions, and, and, and it's for first-time offenders. And it would be something that I think would be, make the students and parents more responsible for any infraction. Uh, this program offers behavior modification counseling, um, parent parental counseling, victim, um, the letters of apologies for any uh, offenses. And it's, it's really it's targeting drugs it's also targeting sexual offenders, but we could do so much more with that program. If we could look at that, Mr. Superintendent, I would sincerely appreciate it. Thank you. Ms. Eagle. I have nothing to report except I've enjoyed my first night. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mr. Superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Crawford, I, going back to your first two comments in reference to the restructuring in our ESC department, we would not have done that, but I do think unless we think it's going to reap rewards and benefits for us, I'm convinced that we will be much more efficient, and, and you will see that as time progresses. And in reference to your comments about ROTC, I couldn't agree with you more that it is, is an absolutely fantastic program. And, and again, as you have already said, I don't know of any district that has more than one high school that, that has ROTC at all their high school. So we're not, we don't want to do anything to upset any, any of those two particular programs. And Mrs. Boynton, in reference to your comments about the Orange County program, sorry, but I've already beat you to it. Uh, yeah. We listened to a very similar presentation uh, with the superintendents uh, that we met with at the same meeting. Uh, from that meeting, I sent Mark Vianello a note in reference to uh, researching that, and he's already been in touch with the Orange County personnel, and I'll be bringing that to you and sharing that with you at a workshop. And it's, it's really good stuff, I agree with you. A couple of other notes, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, we are having some summer school programs going on. We have middle school unit recovery going on and high school credit recovery. Just a couple of, of, of notes here. In the very first week alone, we have 262 different middle school students who attended that week. Nine students completed one of those courses, and here's the good news of that. Of, of those nine, four of those were eighth graders, and now after going to this unit recovery, they are now ninth graders and have been promoted to high school. And likewise, in the high school arena, we have 272 different students attending. 26 students in that first week have already completed a credit recovery class that they had already started. And 20, 20 students are now high school graduates after completing that one. So that, that's pretty good, good news. Along that same line of, of good news about uh, successful students, uh, through the Community Technical and Adult Education Program, just in the last school year, school year 2013, we had 400 and 36 individuals received their GED. That's ranging from 18 to, I don't know what the upper age limits with pretty, pretty fantastic results there. Uh, you know that, that, that I am invited a number of teachers to come and meet with me to discuss FCAT strategies and, and what went right. I am happy to share with you that we have invited 346 different teachers that we have identified to come to Forest High School on uh, July the 8th. We have three different two-hour sessions. We have facilitators. We're going to be presenting those teachers with their own data. We'll have it already printed out for them, and we hope to have a report back on those good strategies uh, soon after that time. Then two more things. One, uh, many of you know Deb Miller. Deb Miller has served our district faithfully as a teacher, a curriculum specialist, and in her most recent life has been working in our employment services division. Deb is retiring. You know that because we've already done some facilitating for helping train someone to replace her. But this Thursday afternoon 
at 3.30 to 5.30. I know she'd appreciate you swinging by as we have a little celebration for her in the ESD office. And uh, so that's this Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30. And then finally, I just got this information. You will see this on the news, I'm sure, but I'll embarrass Teresa Boston Ellis in the back row back there. Yes, she can smile. And this is powerful news, guys, and this is why I feel so comfortable in what I, the information that I receive, and I hope you feel very comfortable with the, that we, the information you receive from our finance department also. Here's the headlines. For the 14th year in a row, the Finance Department of Marion County Public Schools receives national recognitions for its accountability and transparency efforts by an independent agency. Congratulations, Teresa, Thank and your staff. You. We, we trust those folks implicitly, and then they make our jobs much easier. Thank you, sir. Superintendent, uh, we got off that uh, evil 13. Yes, sir. Th that was that was common though. They, they weren't going to say a word was, until they got the letter. I, was <laughs> I can That's say all I've I never called okay. that office and not gotten help. One of the things that I just would like to just bring to the board and and bring some information to you in reference to where we are. I know that uh, the superintendent said that he would bring in a a six step plan to address our needs in, re in reference to uh, our scores and things like that. And one of the things that I would just like to just make all of us aware of in terms of where we are is that we have a strategic plan, and most of us know that we have a, a strategic plan. One of the things that I would like to add to, to our plan, and one of the things I would like to say more than anything else, I would like to have an accountability of, uh, piece. And one of the, uh, and the thing that I would like to ask some of my board members, uh, have you all ever worked with a balanced scorecard? Have you heard of a balanced scorecard? Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Crawford, it's a, business, it's a business piece. And this is one of the things that we use out at Kent Kid Central to determine the progress that we are making in all of our goals. And as a, a board member, I know one of the key things that all of us would like to be is accountable for what we do accountable and focused in on this uh, on our strategic plan and this is what this book will, will, will is really about businesses use it and if you look at the front of the book it will say for uh, government and nonprofit I know that the CEP of uh, uh, Marion County use it Kids Central use it uh, image when I was talking with Judy about it today uh, she pointed out to me that they also use uh, the balance scorecard and a balanced scorecard will give us an opportunity to fo focus in on our plans, what we're doing, and how we can actually uh, really move our dollars in the direction that we, that we uh, want them to go in terms of achieving our goals. I provided one of these copies to the superintendent, and I have enough copies for his staff in reference to his staff being educated in terms of that. And I also, I also, you don't have to worry about it, Ms. Ely. I got them for you. Okay, I will provide copies of, of this strategy so we can look at what we are currently doing and how we can actually determine where we're going. One thing as a parent, and I, I, I've been getting this, one thing as a parent, at the end of the year, the worst thing I can see is my son walking in and said, Dad, I failed. But a balanced scorecard, what it will do, it will give us a chance, if we choose to do it at every nine weeks, look at what all of our programs are doing. Are they meeting their particular goals? Are they meeting their particular uh, uh, goals in reference to what they want to, want to accomplish? We can look at it as we progress through the year. And at the end, we will not be sitting here and saying, I'm surprised that we did not uh, address that. When I look at uh, what we did, what we're doing out at Kid Central, we can look at the number of kids that were arrested. We can look at the number of beds that we have available for kids. But the thing about it, we can make adjustments and saying we need to do something here, we can do something here. Why am I saying this? We can do this with our school system. If you look at our strategic plan here, it is, it is outlining the things that we have, uh, have deemed what uh, the goals that we want to have. If you look at them, they are outlined here. But we need to have a scorecard 
we need to have a scorecard to really tell us in what direction we're going. Either we're moving, uh, moving uh, well in one direction, are we going back, or we need to do something there, and we don't need to get it at the end of the year. Just for the record, I have business people that will, that's willing to bring someone in and sit down and just talk with us about it. Just tell, tell us how it is affecting business in that sense of accountability and focus. And I think, board, when you have people ask you about our accountability, we need to be able to point to some things and say, this is where we are, this is the direction that we're going, this is where our funds are being spent. This is, a, is, is an excellent uh, text, and I would like to say this. Board, we need to move in that direction together. You know, it was really strange to me. We had a few minutes, and guys, we were we were we were doing some, we were saying some things in that few minutes. But everything that we have should be focused on what we are about, and and I think this uh, balanced scorecard would really help us do that. And I talked with some of our employees and some of the people that's around, and they're looking for um, for us to, at the end of a nine weeks to say, hey, you got a B or C or D or whatever. Because this is what this is what we are accustomed to, and I think as a school board we can do this. Mr. Superintendent, I have books for your key people, Thank you. and I will get books for you uh, for our board, and I will schedule. Once you read it, I will schedule someone to just come in and try and educate us on developing a balanced scorecard. So at the each of at the end of each nine weeks, we will have an idea of what we are doing and where we're going. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. James. That's a great idea. I think we've really started some open. <clears throat> There's a lot of new people, and we've opened a lot of cans of worms. And it's hard when you open cans of worms, but I think it has started a an open discussion. I hope where um, we're welcoming that, and and this idea that you've got, where we can evaluate things as we go along, instead uh, because one of the one of the problems that I've always felt that we had here for many, many years as I watched from the outside was we sometimes didn't know when programs weren't working. You know, it was, we just kept doing it because we did that the year before and the year before that and we didn't really know when we were on the right track or on the wrong track. And I've asked Mr. Langford for some information that possibly y'all don't know about that um, where I have requested exactly a child that goes into intensive reading here at the end of third grade and we follow him and I want to see how many graduate I want to see at what point do they get out you know and he's trying to get a he's trying to put something together where he can he can get that information Miss Ely, you might be able to help him. you might have some ways of getting this information that maybe Mr. Langford hasn't thought of but he's got Rodney working on that because I want to know if we've still got these kids in intensive reading in middle school what we've been doing for four or five years has not been working. If the same child is still there. And the teachers tell me that this is another wonderful thing that I've gleaned from the teachers, that it seems that the same kids are always there. If they're not getting out, we need to change course. I never thought it was a travesty to try any program in business. I never thought it was a travesty. But what happens in government that's different than business and private business is, in government, it just gets covered up because no one wants to say they made a mistake. In private business, you can't afford to cover it up and keep moving. And so, Mr. Tomlin, I want to work with you. I want this to be the beginning of a time where we all start to work together. Um, I've heard what I need to know from the teachers, and I've shared it. And we'll be talking some more as the budget goes along. But, Mr. James, thank you for your new idea. And I think that I hope everybody will bring new ideas and that we can work together and say, okay it's okay we didn't do the right thing let's stop doing it and let's change gears and um, something that an administrator told me Mr. Tommen that I found very interesting this week that the best reading program out there is Montessori Montessori okay. alphabet for five-year-olds okay and so I mean that's a great administrator right, thank you. me that one of the things I just would like to just share with everybody we are starting we're getting ready to move into another uh, another school year and I would love for us to be on the same page and not be where we are at this point, you know, where we're looking at test scores. 
And I just wanted to make sure when we leave here, we get something positive left uh, out of this meeting because it's important that we move in, the, in, a, in a direction. Hey, let's move on. I wish to acknowledge that the board members have received an alternative placement list for students through June 6, 2014. Are there any parents in the audience who wish to speak on behalf of a student regarding a disciplinary matter? Seeing none. There being no further business, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved okay. by Mrs. Uh, Ely, second by Ms. Warrington. The meeting is adjourned. Oh, got a vote. Oh, got a vote. All the table signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, meeting is adjourned. Thank you.